Hello, Quilt people. <laughs> How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Ours was pretty good. I am happy that it is over, although we will be eating leftovers probably for the next week. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to show you a um, kind of idea slash tip uh, for borders that are like this, okay? This is a new project that will be posted on the Makery Place. Are you familiar with that? It's kind of fun. You get to take all kinds of classes, things like that. So this is my class here, all right? And uh, I used it in my new leaf fabrics. Um, and I love, love, love this pattern here for a border. I think that it's uh, kind of perfect for a border, if I do say so myself. <laughs> it's why I actually uh, created this pattern specifically so that you would have uh, a border fabric uh, with great impact, right? Um, so the problem with this type of fabric is that you end up with and even if you miter the corner, which I should probably do a tutorial on, because if you don't know how to do that, it's really cool, um, where you get you know essentially a seam diagonally here and then the two pieces meet together. But uh, even with that, you're probably still gonna end up with this situation here where the lines in the fabric aren't lining up, right? And so for anyone who's OCD, <laughs> that's gonna make them completely crazy. Um, so uh, check out this little solution that I have. I'm sure there are lots of others out there, uh, but this is the one that I use. I really enjoy uh, the end result, and I'm happy that I did this little sampler for it to kind of show you the wrong way, right? And so now we'll do the big version, which is over here, uh, and uh, I'm gonna show you a different treatment and what it does is it essentially addresses, right, the stop border, the small border here, right, and it essentially covers this part here, which I love, so that visually it's not as uh, arresting, right, with these lines not meeting up, right? Okay, so let's look at that. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my borders and my stop borders, okay? So that is already done, and now, what I'm going to do, come on borders, okay? What I'm going to do is on all of these, I'm going to attach the stop border onto the main border first, right? Normally you wouldn't do it that way. Uh, you would just do this one and then just do this one. We're gonna do this a little differently. So I'm gonna take this border here and, all right, add just this strip here. Right, on all of them, so, all right? Put them face to face, sew them together, let's get started. When you're doing a long run like this, sometimes it is better, in fact, most of the time it's better, to actually pin it prior to putting it in the machine. Why is that? Because if you do a long run like this, like this long, right? And you don't pin it first, what's going to happen is the feed dogs are going to pull the one fabric through faster than the fabric on top, thus essentially making your fabric kind of arc. You ever had that, right? When you do a long curve, that's why that's happening, right? And so pinning it uh, together uh, every few inches will stop that and you'll have a much cleaner, more accurate uh, border uh, when you're doing long runs like that, okay? So I'm actually gonna pin this first. I was just gonna throw it in the machine. I'm like, eh, I should probably do this right. Okay, can you tell I'm still tired? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing I notice about getting older is like, you just can't push yourself the same way, like without having serious repercussions. So that's where I am today, so you'll excuse the not grumpy behavior, but <laughs> it's tired. <laughs> Just one thing before I get started on this. Just because you're doing this approach doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay attention to anything on your fabric, whether it's directional, whether it's uh, trying to match up the lines, um, whatever it is. So on this particular fabric, right, I cut it, um, this fabric knowing that this distance between this stripe and the edge 
is relatively the same on all of these, right? So then when I put it on and open it up, it's going to be similar, right, on all four sides. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, when you're doing this approach. Just, you know, always try and be uh, as exact as possible, all right? Okay, so we're ready to get going. This is all pinned and... I love this machine, the Juki. Whew, man, it is no joke. It's like driving a sports car. Ready? <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> All right, I have my first two ready. All right, so the stop border is already on the main border. And so I'm just gonna attach the first two sides like you normally would, and then iron it open. Well, of course, after you sew it. <laughs> Okie doke, I have it on one side, right? And the exact same on the other. Other. <laughs> So now um, I'm going to put them on the other side, again, keeping that stop order right where it is. And so it is essentially going to run, right, the length, right? Normally you have the stop order starting here where the pieced work is going down. We're going to have it starting all the way at the top and running all the way down, okay? Uh, so I'm going to put those borders on next and sew them on and then show you what that looks like. This is done, and you can see just by adding those borders, you end up with this corner here, right? Now, what we want to do is to obviously make this, uh, you know, extend out to here. You can do that one of two ways. The normal way <laughs> would be to measure this across here, right? And then piece in a piece of gray, right, that would match this, and then put a corner uh, on here of the matching fabric. However, that requires us to look at even more of trying to line these lines up that are in the design of the fabric, right? So rather than try and guess one more thing that is gonna try and make these lines look like they line up, what, what I do is I just extend it all the way across so that visually it's, you know, repeating at the same, uh, the exact same as before that and then what I do is just uh, so my stop borders are generally 1.25 inches right I find an inch stop border just too diminutive and too small for the scale of most quilts a one inch you know stop border is pretty tiny and the one and a quarter inch just gives me a little more heft and a little more uh, like visually it looks just a just that touch bit uh, stronger uh, than I want. So the next thing I do <laughs> is create a 1.25 inch piece of plastic. It's just template plastic, right? And then I'm going to wrap this with the gray and then I'm going to pick this out, <laughs> sneak it underneath and then just lay it on like a piece of applique and top stitch it and we're done. <laughs> it's a bit of a cheat. Right. But again, with me trying to impossibly line all these lines up, right, uh, this is just another way so that visually, right, visually it looks correct um, rather than trying to, like I said, sew a piece in here and then sew a corner on and try and get all those lines to match up. So this is what I do. <laughs> Okay, so easy enough, right? I have my strips of fabric, I have my template, all right? And so I'm just gonna hold it in place there and kind of just iron the edges, all right? Easy enough, right? I might put a little starch on it just to keep it in place a little bit more. But yeah, just do that to both sides. When you have heat resistant template plastic, it really makes it super easy. I'm gonna do that on both sides and I'm gonna do that with all four, all right? And then I'll show you how to, well, you probably figured it out already, how to pop that seam open. 
slip this in, and that's it. Ugh, having to hold my tummy in after Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, so essentially what we're doing is making this piece extend right out to here. Uh, but again, I want to add this piece in here. I find it easier to uh, open this up and slip this under rather than trying to deal with either a raw edge or a turned edge. I mean, I guess you could. I just don't think it'll look as good if you turn the edge and, and stuck that on there. All right? it's just easier to open up that seam a little bit and pop that in and sew it down. Easy enough. All right, I have this seam open, so I'm just gonna tuck this in here like that, shablam, and then just square it up. Get in there, you. Okay. All right. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. Gotta really make sure that it's square here. And so I'm just gonna pin that down and then top stitch it all. Couldn't be easier. All right, check it out. So I have this pinned in place. It's just slipped under here, right? And so now I'm just going to top stitch it down. Trust me, when it's all said and done, nobody will know the difference other than me. And I'll be very pleased that these lines are uh, more lined up than they normally would be. Is that working? Yes, okay, so I'm just gonna top stitch this down. Okay, pull this out of the machine, and let's see what we got here. What do you think? I think it looks pretty great, All right? Nobody will really know the difference, and again, these stripes visually will have a much better chance of looking like they're lined up even if they aren't perfectly, okay? All right, this is done. And as you can see, I've done the corners kind of with my little cheat approach. Again, the whole purpose for doing it this way is to avoid this situation here, which you can really see on my sampler quilt, right? See how the lines, they, they just don't line up, right? And it's gonna be pretty impossible to achieve that, right, on all four corners. You may be able to get it on one or two, but uh, not all the way around, right? So you're always gonna have just this part being just a little bit off. And so in order to get around that, uh, I've kind of moved to using this type of a treatment on the corners, but again, only when you have borders that uh, are so specific in their lines or whatever that you're having a hard time getting to meet at the correct intersection. So uh, let's take a little close up at uh, what we actually did. This corner is the one that's actually the most off, right? Now, of course, this is perfect. Why? Because it's a solid piece of fabric, right? And then I just applicate this piece over top of it. Now, the thing that you wanna, uh, you know, cover is this area here where these lines aren't, like they're not perfectly lining up, right? And uh, so just by adding this piece here, um, from a distance, you'll never really see that. Whereas if they were right up next to each other, it'd be much more, you know, visually jarring. So you want to kind of arrest, right, the eye and what it's doing here, which stops, right? So you visually are working through this part here. But again, why this is called a stop border, right, is because it's, it visually stops, right, the, um, the eye and it gives clarity to this, section right this section is different this section is different right and so that helps to get um you know this a little bit more perfect as far as what it'll look like from a distance but uh that's the way it turned out and i'm really pleased with it so there you go i hope that you like it i sure do and i will see you next time bye <laughs>